Every time Luffy breaks out a new gear, he also breaks the internet. But Luffy isn't the only One Piece character with a truly epic final transformation. In fact, there are over 100 of them in the story, and today we're gonna explain every single one of them, starting with Zone Fruits. Now, as you probably know, zone fruits basically give their user the ability to transform into an animal and sometimes even mythical creatures or long extinct dinosaurs. But even regular zones have true powerhouses like ZP0's Rob Lucci here, who managed to awaken his devil fruit to make his leopard form even more fearsome and bloodthirsty than it already was, making him a match for post Wano Zoro. Basically, a fruit like this can only awaken when its will perfectly aligns with that of the user, and the fact that Luchi could awaken his means that, like the leopard, he's a true predator who lives for violence and hunting down his prey. On the other hand, mythical zone fruits are the rarest kind of devil fruits and feature some of the coolest final transformations in the entire series. Because they give us characters like Marco here, whose final phoenix form can actually go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, or I guess talon-to-talon, -talon, with two Yonko commanders at once. Basically, turning into a phoenix cloaks his entire body in these blue healing flames and allows for some of the greatest regenerative powers in all of One Piece, but a really important question is, is this his actual final form, or is there still a little bit more to come? Because obviously, a phoenix is very well known for its resurrection abilities after death, so will Marco die at some point and then come back as an even hotter, brighter and even more powerful pineapple-shaped phoenix? But moving on, zone fruits of course aren't the only type of devil fruit users who are capable of transforming. In fact, a lot of paramecia fruits also fundamentally change the user's body in some sort of way. And one great example here is of course Luffy's supernova rival Captain Eustace Kid, because when Kid isn't getting clowned on by various emperors of the seas or railgunning other emperors into submission, well then he is using his powers of magnetism to create truly badass looking transformations like Punk Rotten here. And in this form, he essentially creates a giant mech suit for himself with a sick skull and two giant arms like he's the edgiest Nintendo boss of all time. And of course, the final type of devil fruit is the Logia fruit, which basically lets its user fully transform into a given element by default. The One Piece fandom definitely hasn't seen the last of Fleet Admiral Akainu, for example, who has the power to turn fully into magma. But during the Marineford War, for example, he transformed his hand into a giant magma fist and even sent out these huge biting hounds made out of magma. But the real question, of course, is does he have an even stronger final form waiting for the endgame? I mean, just imagine a giant volcanic dragon ready to incinerate entire islands. And of course, the stronger he actually gets in the end, it'll just make it that much more satisfying when he finally gets what's coming to him. However, we also have to discuss that some transformations in One Piece aren't based on devil fruits at all, because One Piece is full of other weird powers that have just nothing to do with a really well-balanced diet. And a great example here is Frankie's ability to transform just by flashing his fashion sense and putting on his mech suit, transforming into the Frankie Shogun, a cola-powered weapon of mass destruction, able to go up against some of the strongest opponents in One Piece. Or yet another really common category are those with daimonic or curse powers. Yes, of course, some of these come from devil fruits, but many other transformations actually come from something like cursed swords, as is the case with Rodonoa Zoro. Using the power of multiplication, he can turn his three sword style into nine sword style when he assumes his very infamous Ashura form here. When he assumes his final form, he basically resembles a type of demon in Hinduism and Buddhism because Ashura has three heads and nine swords, enhancing his cutting powers threefold and probably even more than that. And yet, other characters don't even need the help of a devil fruit or hockey or a weapon at all, they just won the genetic lottery and were born with powerful new forms all by default. And maybe the best example of this is of course the mink tribe like Carrot here, who can basically turn into their ultra powerful Sulong form whenever there is a full moon. This pure white form with red eyes was capable of taking out multiple ships in Big Mom's fleet, single 
handedly making Carrot much, much, much stronger than just her base form. Also, hmm, white with red eyes, that does sound kind of familiar, but that final form is gonna come up later, of course. For now, though, the last category of transformations that we need to introduce for this video is basically everything else. And that's because, unsurprisingly, in a story like One Piece, some characters do transform into final forms, but just don't match many of the other transformations in the series. A great example of this is, of course, Bartholomew Kuma here, a member of the Buccaneer race, who was turned into a powerful cyborg by Dr. Vegapunk. I mean, yeah, he did lose his free will in the process, but he also did gain the ability to shoot very cool lasers out of his mouth, so I guess, you know, we're roughly even at that point. But as you've probably guessed, this is literally just the tip of the iceberg because I was able to find over 100 different final transformations in one piece. So now that we have all of the categories out of the way, let's go back to Logia Fruits. And standard Logia users like Ace here can turn completely into fire and Smoker can turn fully into, well, smoke. And if we want to go and count Ace and Sabo separately, so far at least there are only about 10 of these standard elemental transformations in the story. However, much more interestingly, a few Logia Fruit users do have transformations that we could actually call a much more typical final form, so to speak. For instance, Aramaki here, also better known as the Marine Admiral Green Bull, actually turns into a giant forest man with a big tree face, which does feel a little bit different than most of the more intangible elements. Or another great example, instead of just turning into a big pile of soot, which would be kind of boring, the Revolutionary Army's commander Karasu here can actually turn into an entire flock of soot birds that can act independently of each other. Next, Caesar Clown here can absorb different types of gases to change his Logia transformation, but when he absorbs his own deadly gas, Shino Kuni, he then turns into a much larger, darker purple form that is a a lot, lot stronger than his regular gas form. Of course, it's still no match for a really good punch from Luffy. And neither is Caesar Clown's actual ultimate form, which is of course Gangster Gastino. And some sharp One Piece fans may have noticed the subtle hints during the Whole Cake Island arc that the character Gangster Gastino was actually Caesar Clown in a very clever disguise, despite most people being strongly convinced that they were actually two distinct characters. But moving on, Enel here has his Amaru or literal thunder god form, where he grows many, many times larger and encases himself in literal lightning, giving him a truly divine looking appearance. Still, even in this final form, it doesn't mean that he can do any damage to rubber though, and I mean, it's understandable that he would lose to Luffy's most powerful form, Baka Luffy. Just kidding. Of course, Luffy also has an elemental form, even though he is not a Logia, because he can transform into the super powerful Water Luffy, which he used to be able to attack another Logia Crocodile with. However, even though he can clearly channel the ultimate weaknesses of any Devil Fruit user, this isn't even his final form, you might be surprised to find out. But first, they do say that the clothes do make the man, and in One Piece, that is very literally the case, because some of the series' most iconic transformations are actually just glorified costume changes. Of course, by far the most disturbing one is when Kelly Funk here actually wears his own brother using the jacket jacket fruit to fulfill his final form. Next up, Kinemon's whole devil fruit concept is all about wearing different clothes, and since it comes from an actual Devil Fruit power, I'm gonna count a leaf transforming into a whole outfit as a transformation here. Even if technically it doesn't actually change his strength levels all that much, or actually at all. But now, of course, some clothes that do make the user a lot more powerful are the One Piece World's evil Power Rangers, better known as the Germer 66. As you might know, Sanji's siblings and his dad can actually equip their so-called raid suits to unlock greater speed, stamina, defense, strength, and of course, very cool special powers. And of course, also featured during the same Whole Cake Island arc was Big Mom's sweet commander Cracker here, who used his bis 
these kid soldiers as a super powerful armor, giving him a completely different appearance and hiding his real body. And of course, even Sanji himself also had a raid suit for a while, which turned him into Soba Mask here. Of course, the biggest downside being that his special ability actually turned him invisible, which meant that no one could see just how cool he actually looked as a German ninja. But of course, he actually can rely on his own transformations, notably the Diable Jamble and the even hotter final form, the Ifrit Jamble, which grants him the power of hot legs. And interestingly enough, Sanji isn't the only member of the Straw Hats to feature a cloth-based transformation either, because Luffy's most powerful final form is actually Afro Luffy here, when he wore a big Afro wig during the Davy Back fight. Oh, wait a second here. Oh, my editors have just informed me on screen here that that's actually not the final form yet, so uh, I guess more on Luffy's final form actually later. And I will say that I'm kind of skeptical about this next one, but I have been told that apparently Usopp transforms into Soge King by putting on just a mask. However, that just doesn't make any sense, because of course these are two separate distinct characters. Usopp is from Sarah Village, as we know, and Soge King is from Sniper Island, so that just wouldn't make any any sense if they were the same person. Because real One Piece fans know that Usopp's actual final form is going to be God Usopp. But going back to my earlier point, most of the series transformations still come from Devil Fruit powers and we're still not going to talk about zones yet either because several Paramecia fruits also do grant people the ability to transform parts of their bodies or even their entire bodies which gives a lot of them a final form as well. And there are actually a surprising amount of these as well because Paramecias are officially the most common type of devil fruit in the story, turning into pretty much anything other than an animal or an element everything else is part of this category. And interestingly enough, quite a bunch of them are actually on Doflamingo's crew, where he has recruited people who can turn into propellers, into weapons, or, you know, just literally an entire town. And actually, a ton of the worst generation also utilize Paramecia-style transformation as well. For example, for Scratchman Apu's final form, he engages in extreme body horror to turn into David Cronenberg's ideal orchestra, I guess. Or Capone Beach here turns literally into a whole castle, which is much, much more impressive than Wapol turning into just a house or a human weapon or turning skinny or fusing his soldiers together in yet another body horror experiment by Oda. And next up, a surprising amount of final Paramecia forms are actually quite demonic in nature. For example, you have Basil Hawkins' demon face transformation, Magellan's venom demon form, and Cavendish's demonic alter ego Hakuba, which is actually due to his cursed sword. And while we're at it, I'm actually going to lump in Moria's shadow Asgard as well, which stuffs him full of shadows, increasing his power into his final really big form as well. But of course, if we're talking about Shadow's Asgard, we do have to bring up the bluest of all of Luffy's final transformations, Nightmare Luffy, but it somehow still isn't quite yet his final form either. And of course, if we're talking about demons and straw hats, then we also have to mention Nico Robin's Demonio Fleur. And actually, I'm still very much waiting for answers from Oda on how she actually went from sprouting hands to turning into the literal devil. Though, I already mentioned Zoro at the beginning of the video, but what about the straw hat that channels his powers from the literal underworld? And that means, of course, that I'm talking about Brook's final unleashed Soul King transformation, and I'm not grasping at straws here. I don't mean when he puts on a feather boa. I'm, of course, talking when his soul literally leaves his body in an electrifying manner like when he went up against Big Mom's homies. And speaking of Big Mom, there's actually another straw hat whose transformation is all thanks to her. Now granted, Nami doesn't actually fully transform, but Zeus does when he combines with the climb attack, giving him a mace-like shape and giving Nami a cool sentient weapon that is also basically her final form at this point. Oh, and since we're talking about Big Mom, then we have to talk about... Well, Big Mom. 
There's of course her hunger tantrums, which are a sort of transformation, but if she has an actual final form, it would have to be when she turns into a bloodlusted skinny legend and her hair catches on fire thanks to her homie Prometheus. But we're not done because the Paramecia transformations just keep coming, because there's also Diamond Jozo here who can turn his entire body into solid diamonds. Buggy the Clown also utilizes a sort of transformation, even though it is mostly meant to be as an illusion. Basically, by using his Chop Chop abilities combined with a quite stretchy oversized outfit, he can then become the giant buggy who appears a lot lot more bigger and fearsome than, well, he actually is. Then Ivankov's abilities let them basically change their own gender at will as well as that of others like Inazuma here who in turn has their own ability to change their arms into giant scissors. And fellow Okama Mr. Two Bone Clay can also change into, well, literally anybody that they have touched, but I'm still only counting that as one final form. But that's still not all of them because there are still... How many? 15 more Paramecias? Okay, let's hurry this up or uh, else we're never getting to our zone fruits here. Bellamy's final form turns him into springs, Diamante gets all ripply, Treble is, well, a gross, gross man who ate a sticky, sticky fruit and kind of is a big giant booger. Matchwise and Miss Valentine both turn really heavy, Absalom, may he rest in peace, and now Shiryu can turn fully invisible, Das Bones turns into a giant sword, Miss Doublefinger here is very pointy, Alvida's very very slippery, and Avalo Pizarro is, well, literally an entire freaking island. This guy's balls, this guy's wheels, and this guy has a lot of pockets. Oh, and uh, of course, for the longest time, we all assumed that uh, Luffy was a Paramecia fruit user who had eaten the rubber rubber fruit, and using his rubber abilities, he was able to ascend to the most powerful of his forms yet, Gear 2nd, which took out ZP9's Bruno with lightning fast movements, because by basically using his rubber body's ability, Abilities, he's able to literally pump himself up, making his blood flow much, much faster. His skin starts to gain a reddish hue, and he begins to literally steam before moving faster than the eye can see. And then, of course, Gear Third's other name is the Bone Balloon, which basically lets him inflate his body parts, and this lets him demolish buildings with ease by punching with a gigantic fist. And, of course, once Luffy had mastered hockey, he was able to unlock Gear Fourth, and instead of inflating his bones, Luffy inflates his literal muscles, but then locks in this new shape with hardened armament hockey. And from there on out, with Gear Fourth came multiple transformations such as Bound Man, which turns him into a giant bouncing balloon with retractable cannon arms, Tank Man, which he can use after eating a whole lot of food to take advantage of his increased size, and of course, Snake Man, a much sleeker version of Gear Fourth with just insane amounts of speed. None of these offer really strong different stat combinations that he can use depending on the combat situation that he found himself in, letting him take down really, really strong opponents with these forms. And yet, none of these Gear Force transformations are even his final form yet. And before we can finally move on to the next category, one last Paramecia fruit comes from Jula Rabani, who has the power to manipulate her age. However, by using an altered future technique, she can literally take on a form that's essentially how she would imagine herself in a parallel or alternate timeline. And of course, the most notable of these is when she imagines herself as the sun god in the future and gets a super swole form developing huge arms and upper body strength and skipping leg day just like her daddy. Oh, and the Konoichi Shinobu can also manipulate Aegis with her fruit, but only in one direction. She basically used this to turn Momonosuke from a little dragon into his full-sized final dragon form and from a little boy into a little boy in the body of a full-grown man. Oh, and uh, of course Shinobu also went through a transformation of her own, completely unrelated to her devil fruit, which brings us to the mixed category because here's like everything else except for zone fruits. We'll get to those. And starting this off with Shinobu, she somehow managed to return to her form from 20 years ago after she healed from her wounds after the Battle of Onigashima. And there's actually another very small subcategory of transformations that basically involves a character's face being permanently changed. For example, Duval, who originally looked like the bad drawing in Sanji's Wanted poster, had his face kicked into shape and became suddenly handsome. A real glow up and a really good final form to have. 
Denjiro, on the other hand, got so mad that he frowned until his face was completely altered, until it was basically unrecognizable. Yeah, that's all of them. I know, it's it's not a lot, but it's kind of weird that it, you know, happened twice. And now, before we get to the largest categories of Transformers in One Piece, Autobot, I mean, Zoans, we do have a couple more mixed forms that didn't really fit in either of these other categories. For example, Virgo here transforms into a quite formidable-looking full-body hockey muscle man. Pearl, a weirdo on Don Creek's crew who fought Sanji during the Baratie arc, somehow just catches their body on fire. Wait, Sanji does that with his leg as well later on. Is this another instance of a Goda doing the next level foreshadowing thing? More likely it's just Oda doing his ultimate skill, drawing a really weird guy doing really weird things. And of course, the most important transformation of them all is all the Straw Hats together transforming to perform their docking maneuver on Thrilla Bark, well, except for Robin, since she would find it insulting to her, well, very sense of being alive. And speaking of really cool Straw Hat transformations, Frankie, of course, has some others in addition to just the Frankie Shogun that I mentioned at the beginning. And obviously, I'm talking here about Frankie's actual ultimate form, the Frankie Centaur, where he splits the front of his legs in order to become a four-legged reverse centaur. Okay, maybe that's not as good as the Frankie Shogun. There's also Frankie turning into a cyborg in the first place. And while we're talking about the scientists of the One Piece world, let's not forget Dr. Megapunk, whose transformation was uh, sort of related to his fruit, but I don't think a mandatory part of the Brain Brain fruit was actually cutting his brain out turning it into a cloud computer and then outsourcing his entire life into several different bodies. Talk about being a very weird and extra, I guess, but even though other Devil Fruit users do technically also transform, with Zone Fruits, transforming is basically their entire thing. Specifically, every single Zone user has three forms. A human form, a hybrid form, and a pure animal form. And we actually first learned about Zone Fruits with Dalton on Drum Island Island who turned into a bull. However then, it wasn't really long before we encountered Chaka and Pell who can turn into a Chakal and a Falcon respectively, giving them the appearances of Egyptian gods like Anubis and Horus. Then of course with ZP9 we met even more zones like Luchi who we already discussed earlier, and of course Kaku turning into a giraffe and Jabra transforming into a big bad wolf. Kaku of course also being an awakened giraffe user at this point, whatever that actually means. And one of the most unique zone forms out there actually belongs to Baron Tamago here who ate the egg egg fruit. Basically when his egg form is defeated, he can overcome this defeat by regenerating into a chicken-like form. And then once the chicken is defeated, he can repeat the process and hedge into a full chicken. And then once this form is defeated, he can once again return to his egg form, making him a very tricky opponent to defeat since he can basically continue his regeneration over and over again. And in One Piece, one of the most shocking things about Zone Fruits in the first place is that you don't even need to be a living thing in order to consume one. I mean, inanimate objects can also eat Zone Fruits, such as Spandam Sword Funk Freet, eating an elephant zone, or this teapot, or Lasso here, being a cannon that actually ate a dog devil fruit. And I did catch you almost yawning here, and we would be here for a very long time if I name every single zone fruit, because there are now over 40 of them in one piece, so let's talk about some of the more unique ones, and I hope you're okay with that. For example, on Kaido's crew, there are a ton of so-called ancient zones, which can basically transform into extinct animals. These include x who turns into an Olosaurus. Many people do think he's a T-Rex, but this actually isn't the case. But to even know the difference, Oda must really be into dinosaurs, I guess? Uh, other ancient zones also include King here, who turns into a flying dinosaur called a Pterodon and Queen, who becomes a Brachiosaurus. Interestingly enough though, all three of these are models of the dragon dragon fruit models, not a dinosaur fruit model, though that's only due to the fact that you means both dragon and dinosaur in Japanese. Funnily enough though, their captain Kaido doesn't have the dragon dragon fruit, he doesn't even have an ancient fruit, instead he just has the rarest class of devil fruits out there, a mythical zone fruit, which actually turns the user 
into some type of mythical or legendary creature. And funnily enough, Kaido's fruit is called the fish fish fruit model Azure dragon, which references the Japanese myth of a carp swimming up a waterfall in order to transform into a powerful dragon. Basically imagine magic carp going into Gyarados, exact same thing. Of course, Kaido isn't the only mythical zone fruit though. There are plenty of others that make for some of the coolest final transformations in the entire story of One Piece. Like his daughter, for instance, because Yamato uses the Okuchino Makami fruit to transform into a fierce wolf, who is the guardian deity of Wano. And basically she gets all the strength and speed boosts that come with being a zone in addition to commanding frigid ice powers. There's also Sengoku, the former fleet admiral of the marines who can transform into a giant golden Buddha statue. And again, I could keep going all day listing all of these other zones, but I think you get the picture now. If a One Piece character transforms into an animal, then that means they are a zone. You got it. But there is another zone that I have to talk about because he is one of the Straw Hat crew himself, because Chopper is a reindeer who ate the human fruit, giving him the intelligence of a human being. However, using his scientific knowledge, he's been able to access way more forms than the typical regular zone by using his so-called rumble balls and undergoing quite rigorous training to better control his devil fruit. And so Chopper's transformations, called points, include his jump point, guard point, arm point, horn point, brain point, and Kung Fu point, but his actual final form is having access to a beastly transformation called Monster Point, which he found he could do by basically overdosing on his balls, which sounds very wrong. However, a side effect of forcing himself into Monster Point gives him yet another transformation, making him Baby Grandpa Chopper, technically his final form, I guess. But yes, I know there is of course one last Straw Hat zone that you have all been waiting for. Luffy Luffy's actual final form, Gear 5th. Because as we all know at this point, Luffy never actually ate the rubber fruit because there was never such a fruit to begin with. Instead, Luffy's of course a mythical zone user who ate the human human fruit, model Nika, giving him all of the powers of the literal sun god. And that means that for his final transformation, his clothes and hair turn completely white, his eyes turn red, and he begins laughing uncontrollably. And basically, in this form, his powers are limited only by by his own imagination and he uses the power of cartoon logic to bend the environment and himself to his own will. That means that in Luffy's fight against Kaido for instance, he had some truly crazy feats like turning himself giant and grabbing literal lightning bolts out of the sky. That means that Gear 5 probably makes Luffy the character with the most potential in the entire series. Oh wait, white hair, red eyes? <laughs> Why does that sound so familiar? Well, that's exactly the same thing as happens with the Minx transformation when they turn into their Sulong forms under the full moon. Now, technically, every mink is capable of this transformation, but only a handful can actually control its true power. And so for the total final transformation count, I'll only take the confirmed Sulongs into consideration here. And interestingly enough, it's the same type of transformation that also Hody Jones and all of his new Fishman pirate officers went through when they ate the energy steroids as well. Which altogether means that One Piece has a truly insane amount of final transformations, but that still doesn't answer why there are such surprising similarities between Gear 5th, the energy steroids, and the Sulong forms. Like, there has to be a deeper mystery to uncover here, and actually you can uncover this mystery and all of the other deepest mysteries that One Piece has to offer in this One Piece lore iceberg right here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or had fun, please consider to like, share, subscribe to the channel. I know it's really annoying, but it does help us out quite a lot. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.